I just want to comment on this, and, and, and we'll go into our message. Um, in these days we live in as the church, as the church, you don't have to walk in fear. You don't have to live in fear of anything. And when there is wars, when there is rumors of wars, you can have a blessed assurance that, as Paul told Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power, love, everybody say love, love. and a sound mind. Not a, not a mind that's lost, not a mind that's confused, but a sound mind. And so he's given us that in this age, and this is the age of the church. And so therefore, since we, as Pastor Fred even uh, made comment of it, we are the salt of the earth, and we are the light of the world, because we are his body. We represent Jesus in the earth today. And so we can walk free from fear, and we can walk in the authority that Christ has given us. Are you hearing me this morning? And so be, be encouraged, be enriched in that, okay? Because fear, there's, how many know there's no fear in heaven? There's no fear in Jesus. There's no fear in Christ. And we are in Christ. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get into my message uh, today, if you guys don't mind. I want to talk about something that it, it, it occasionally needs to be brushed on. The title of my message is Walking in Love, Whether Anybody Else Does or Not. Walk in love whether anybody else does or not. Okay? Uh, I want to put up, if you can put up the four Greek words for love. There's actually six Greek words for love. But we're going to, put, we're going to talk about um, just a couple of them. And um, if you have that, agape. Everybody heard of agape love. That's the God kind of love. That is a love that's not selfish. And how many know that your flesh has a tendency to be selfish? I know mine does, and i got to put it in place. But the God kind of love, Christ, God so loved the world, he just, he didn't send Jesus. He just said, well, they, you know what, they on their own. No, God so loved the world, he did what? He gave. It's unselfish. Jesus didn't have to die for himself, friends. He wasn't lost. He died for the human race. There's another kind of love. As, um, it's, it's arrows, which we get erotic. Ooh, that's a bad word, is it not, or no? You need that kind of love in marriage. Hear me. You need it in marriage, but you need the agape love to dominate. Amen. Are you listening to me? And there is another word for love, and it's philea, which is more of a human love, an affectionate, a friendship uh, between equals. How many know that a lot of marriages and relationships are on the erotic and the phileo, but how many know when it doesn't get its way, then you know what, it changes on a dime. Have you remember where you can say, you know, honey, I mean, you don't do the dishes, you don't, you don't, you don't, all these negative things to your faults, but then all of a sudden the guy says, oh, but baby, you want to, let's, let's roll in the hay a little bit. <laughs> can I say that in church? <laughs> I'm going to keep this rated PG. And then the woman says, are you crazy? Well, baby, I love you. I'm getting ahead of myself, but the Bible says, love not in word, but in deed. How many know that love is an action word? So you need the phileo, you need the arrows, but what has to be umbrellaed by the God kind of love? Everybody say the God kind of love. There's another love called a storge, which means a love and affection. It's kind of like a love between parents and children, that kind of love. That's, you, see, you see that. But we want to focus on the God kind of love today, all right, the God kind of love. And uh, let's go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. I promise I'll get everybody out of here on time. They say, blessed are the short when, why? They shall be heard again. <laughs> 1 John 4, 7, New Living Translation. I, we're going to be reading some scripture today. Is that okay? So if you have your, your tablets or look, you can look on the screen. It says this, dear friends, let us continue to love one another. Get this, for love comes from God. 
And anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. Notice this. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God. Why? Because God is what? Love. So the Father doesn't have love to give. He is love. And the way he shows his love is by his actions. Again, for God so loved the world, he did something. Why we were hateful and hating one another, Paul said, Christ died for us. So the love of God, God is love. So if that's who he is, that's what we should emphasize in our daily walk as believers. It's nice to have, you know, we, we, God wants us blessed. He wants us to have things. He wants us to live healthy and all that. But, but the bottom line is you have to walk in the love of God. Remember, uh, Paul said, uh, uh, you know, what is it that I give everything and have not love? Now notice, your obedience to walk in love is your gauge on how much you love the Lord. Notice this, John chapter 14. We're going to go a little quick today, but it says this, New Living Translation. Jesus said this, this is the words of the Lord, so they're in red. If you love me, obey my commandments. He didn't just say, if you love me, just tell me you love me. I mean, we, we, get, we should tell that we love him. But he says, if you love me, do my commandments. What's his commandments? That you love one another. You love one another. He goes on to say that if you love one another, this is how you, people know you're my disciples. Love one towards another. And I find out, and sometimes growing up in church, growing up in Christendom, uh, a lot of times there's conflicts amongst believers. There's conflicts amongst denominations. But the, 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 the hallmark of the world knowing that Jesus is Lord is that we have love one towards another. Amen. That means how we treat one another. Right. What we say about each other. Are you hearing me this morning? Now, in, in 1 Corinthians, uh, I'm just going to say that Paul said, these three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is what? Love. And so, as a child of God, it's our duty to walk in love, because that's who the Father is. That's who He is, and th that's what we display. The, the Bible goes on to say that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Paul went on to say this, live a life filled with love for others. Follow the example of Christ who loved you and gave himself as a sacrifice to take away your sins. And God was pleased because that sacrifice was like a sweet perfume. You want to smell good to the Lord? Now how you work out, you come home, ooh, you stink because you got to take a shower. But if you want to smell good to the Lord, walk in love, whether anybody else does or not. Whether no matter what people say about you, no matter how people treat you, it's our duty as believers. You know what? We're going to walk in love. It, it can have a sign that it's weak, but it bends with the wind, but it won't break. It's, it was a sign of weakness when Jesus died on the cross. Well, he, he saved others. How come he couldn't save himself? But yet, it was his demonstration. And when he rose from the dead, he was more victorious and gave the keys. Had the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And he gave it to the church and said, in my name, the devil's defeated. Are you hearing me? So love may show that it's weak, but really love is strong. Because that's who the father is. How many know that the father is strong? Okay, notice this. The most difficult challenge is accepting the realization that love, I'm going to show you how to walk in it, is a decision. You have to choose to walk in love, not based on your feelings, not based on your emotions. I choose to walk in love whether anybody else does or not. I'm going to love my spouse. I'm going to love my neighbor who may cuss me out. Jesus says, those who curse you, he said, bless them. Remember that? First thing we want to do, what you, did you say to me? You know what I mean? Come on, come up here, Pastor Dean, just for a moment. Just for a moment, no, I'm not going to, come up here. So, just stay there, just stay there. 
so someone, someone had uh, called me a name when I, was, when I was a kid. Someone had called me a name. I was a little kid. I was little skinny. And then someone said something to me. And they were bigger than I was, too. <laughs> but anyway, first thing I did, and this is back in the 70s. Okay, and I remember I had platform shoes on and, and, and the bell bottoms and all that. You know, like super fly, I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> and then someone said something like, oh, from afar off. Hey, Mark, you, I said, what you say? I go, what you, what you say to me? What you say to me? <laughs> waiting, for, waiting, waiting for him to throw the first punch. And to make a long story, you can sit down, Pastor. A long, make a long story short. We got into a tango, and I beat him up, believe it or not. That's nothing to listen. But love wants to, 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 that's what the flesh wants to do. Are you with me? But when you're born again, the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. So all of you, every believer has the capacity to love like Jesus and love like the Father. It takes, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but love is a decision. Obedience is God's definition of love. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey me. Come on now. And so that means it's a decision. I choose, I'm going to walk in love, not so much because, because Jesus told me to. That's his command. And it's not an obligation. It's a command. Did you know that? It's not like, well, I feel like walking in love today, but tomorrow, you know what? If they do that tomorrow, they're getting on my last nerves. Anybody been like that? But no, it's our duty to walk in love and live a life in the love of God. Are you with me so far? To walk in love is to walk in the Father. I want to be in His class. Only lovers count. I want to be in his class. How about you? I want to be in Jesus' class. He's, he was a perfect example of love demonstrated on the earth. That's who I want to be. Well, they didn't do this for me. They, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. I remember I, 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 I pastored for many years. I grew up in the church as a kid. As a child, we grew up, our parents, my mother, we grew up in church. And I tell you what, they, I mean, how many know that believers aren't perfect? <laughs> Everybody say this, I'm not perfect either. <laughs> and I remember uh, there was a one situation when I was pastoring, just to make a long story short, um, uh, there was a couple that didn't like the way I handled a situation because, uh, you know, the, the Bible says, he who's overtaken in a fault, which you which are spiritual, restore such one. And I remember, well, we were, you know, in the restoring process of this individual, and they, were, they, were, they, wanted to get, they needed to get built back up spiritually, but then this couple, they didn't like the way we handled it. And so, blah, 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 How many know that when that happens, your lips, you, you begin to just say good things and bless them? Well, they didn't like it, but we, we, we felt we were going to stand on how God's word said it. Well, I didn't like it. How many know a lot of times, I found out church folks are opinionated, Dr. Dean. Don't you know that? <laughs> when I got some opinions laid on me. I remember I went home one day and I was saying to Cindy, I go, these people Christian, they even saved? Angry and bitter and, 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 and just angry. Why? Is that the spirit? Was that the spirit of the Lord? Well, anyway, they, you know, they let me know what they, they thought. I just smiled. And I say, you know what, this is what the Bible says, this is what we're doing. Well, and they wanted to leave. I said, you know what, we pr you know, God bless you. We pray for your future. We pray for your, 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 your upkeep. And then I told the church, this back then, I said, whatever you do, do not say nothing negative about them or anybody else. 
I want you to bless them. You remember when they crucified Jesus, he said, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. You remember that? And so we just decided we're going to, and, and then I began to teach our congregation, this is back then, I go, we're going to walk in love whether anybody else does or not. And so we just smiled. I go, don't say nothing. Matter of fact, if you're going to say something about them, bless them and say something good about them. I don't want to hear nothing negative. And don't you say nothing negative. How many know if someone, say, someone says something to you negative, if they, talk about, if they talk to you about somebody, they'll talk to somebody else about you. Is this okay teaching, Pastor Dean? And so we began to just teach, and, 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 and I taught the love of God for about six months. And I said all that to say this. If you walk in love, the Lord will, will vindicate you. I'll tell you why. Several years later, that same couple came back to our church. They were contrite. They were, they were humble. And, and they said, you know what, we apologize. And they said, you know, this is, this is always, we always consider this our home church. They go, but we're going to be moving. We sold our house. And so they tithed off the, the, what they sold their house on. It was one of the biggest offerings. And that's just by walking. I mean, we could have filed out and this and that, but we walk in love whether anybody else does or not. Are you getting something? Uh, always remember, the world won't know that we're his disciples if we're fighting and backbiting and hateful and sowing discord among the churches and ourselves. But the Lord will know if by love one another. One thing about our church here is that we walk in the love of God. Okay, we walk in the love of God. And even though conflicts, uh, I remember anytime you have people together, I remember in the workplace, conflicts will always arise occasionally. But did you know love, when you're preferring one another, when you're esteeming one another better than yourself? Are you hearing me? That is so much healthier than, you know, I got my defense up. We're going, you know what, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. And I worked in retail for years. I've managed for years in retail. And in and, and retail, you're dealing with a lot of unsafe folks. And how many know people can get ugly? I mean, I, and, I, and I'm going to let you know something. In my almost 60 years... I gave my age away. I should have said I was 45, mama. <laughs> in all the years on this planet and, and working retail and every kind of retail known to man, I've seen just about everything I could see in folks. But I remember I got a, 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 a I, was, I was a manager at a store one just years ago, and I remember I got a, a, a you know, on the walkie, they, they, they intercom me. He said, uh, Mark, we need you up at the courtesy desk. We got a customer who's really upset. And she said, you, and be ready. <laughs> and I said, and I began to just say, oh, go, Lord, help me. And I said, you know, just prayed in the spirit a little bit. And I said, well, I'm going up there. And I decided, and this doesn't always happen this way, but I decided, okay, I'm just going to smile. And I'm going to try to be as sweet as I can be. And so I go up there. There was this lady, she was, you know, I can tell she, 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 was, she was agitated about something. I get it. I was going to try to take care of her as best I could. Anyway, I just went up there, and I smiled. Hi. I said, ma'am, how can I help you? I tried to show these dimples, you know, as much as I could. I said, look, I said, how can I help you? And this lady, guess this. She was, she was looking down, and she looked up at me, and, you know, and she goes, I'm trying to be mad, but I can't with you. <laughs> and I said, uh, well, you know, you know, whatever her situation was, I said, let me see your receipt. You know, we took care of her, but I'm just going to respond in God's goodness. Are you with me? Whether she did or not. That's what the title, what's the title of my message today? Were there anybody else? Cause, how many know love can be seen because it's an action word? I finished my second point. Notice this. Uh, this is a scripture I have. 
our hearts, well, let me just say this. Uh, let me just quote this scripture to you. I don't have it in my notes, but it says, if someone says, I love God, but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people who we can see, how can we love God who we cannot see? And so going on, our, horiz our horizontal relationship with one another is based on our vertical relationship with the Father. Are you with me? Walking in love. When, when you walk with the Father, it's just love. There's no, there's no resistance in giving because you're walking in the love of God. You know the Lord's already going to meet your needs, or He's your source. So just walking in love, it, 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 covers, it, it covers a multitude of faults. How many know that the same, if people irritate you and people do sometimes, I get it. People get on your nerves sometimes. People can frustrate you. That's just the human nature. But how many know when you say, you know what, I'm going to love that. Get this. I'm going to let that go by. I'm not going to really choose that as a battle right now. I'm going to just, I'm going to just get pouring some of the mercy. That's the same way God looks at you. Because how many know we may have not always done right? We may have done someone wrong, maybe unintentionally, maybe intentionally. But the love of God, he was mercy to us, will show mercy to someone else. Amen. The same love we're with, Paul said, the same love we're with Christ has loved you, we show and we demonstrate to somebody else. Are you with me so far? The love of God changes you. The love of God will, 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 will cause things. I remember, and I've told this story before. I'm going to say it without crying, but I told this story before where um, when, I was a, when I was young, in the Lord, uh, I, I, I did retail. There was this older gentleman, and I don't use this term, <laughs> I don't use this term flippantly, but boy, he, did, he was... There were certain nationalities he did not like. And he verbally said it. This is back when you can say that and nothing, there's no repercussions. And I would pray. I said, you know what, Lord, I pray for him. I was just a young believer. I go, you know what, I lift him up. I heard him say, I don't, he said things about so many other people. I don't even know if he liked himself. He had that rough exterior. And so, and he was an older man. Anyway, I prayed. I would just always come to work. I said, I pray for him. And I would always say, good morning. <laughs> and I purposely said, good morning. <laughs> I said, I hope you're having a good day. <laughs> and then I would say this. I said, you know what? Jesus loves you. <laughs> and I just smile. I just smile. And, and get this. And then one day, this is the day I didn't have a car. I was riding my bike to work. I remember one day, um, my dad came in the store. To, 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 he wanted to give me something. My dad came in the store, and I saw this gentleman stop what he's doing, came up to my dad and said, boy, your, your little son, Mark, he's just a fine young man. Wow. Get this. And one day, it was raining really hard, and I had rode my bike. I remember I was getting ready to go in the rain, and he was leaving too. He had a truck. He said, put your truck, put your bike in my truck. I'm going to take you home. And, 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 and he, he, his, he got softer. Are you hearing me? He got tender. And I would just continue to pray for him and believe God's best. Are you with me? And so love is always best in any situation. And so that blessed me, and I go, yeah, I guess love, I said, Jesus, love works, because that's his command, the love of God, being gentle to one another, kind. Let's go on. Paul said something, before I get to my main script, uh, other scripture, Paul said this. He said in Ephesians, <clears throat> speak the truth in love. You always want to be truthful, but you want to say it right. Did you hear me? 
I've had so many, I've, and you, you might have seen it too. Uh, you know, I remember one person uh, just said, well, you know, uh, you know, I'm just going to speak the truth. It's just the truth, and it's just the way I am. I'm going to speak it just the way I am. If you, they can't take it, that, that's just tough. That's, that's not Jesus. Did, did you hear me that? Speak the truth, Paul said in Ephesians. We won't go there, but Paul said in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verse 50, speak the truth, but do it in love. Well, that's just the way I am. Now, listen, I'm going I'm to I'm say something. I want everybody to hopefully receive it. God loves the human race. He loves you more than you would ever know. He loves the human race. And someone once said to me, um, you know, they, well, I'm just blunt. They're just going to have to take it that way. No, no, we don't. You don't. Well, we're just going to... Wait, 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 wait. No, you don't. You love people. And when you say things, you want to season your words with salt, Paul said. And you want to say it so in a way that they can receive it, not just to get some truth out. Oh, it's quiet in here. I don't know if I'm... <laughs> well, I'm, it's, just, it's just the way I am. It's just the way I am. Well, listen to me. Then you have to change. And you have to let the love of God help you as he helped me, as he helped all of us that grow in the maturity of Christ. I know everybody's at different stages of spiritual growth, but he'll help you develop. And the love of God can take your individual personality, that's, there's no one else like you, and he can, he can wrap it and, and clothe your personality with his love that it turn you into another person. You're still you. You still have your personality, but it's wrapped in the love of God. Are you with me? You say, oh, well, you know, he, you know God, he loves me just the way I am. That's not always true. I'm going to break something for you. God loves you. He loves the human race. But he doesn't always have to love what you do. Let me, give you, let me give you an example. While we were hateful and hating one another, Christ. Okay, now get this. If I, I abuse my wife, I, I, I'm abusive to my children, I'm, 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 I'm running around with women, but I'm a Christian, God loves me, but he doesn't love the way I am. Are you hearing me? He loves me and he will always, he'll love you no matter what. Kind of let me put it on this level. Those of you who have children that may have gotten off into maybe drugs or, or doing some wrong, you love them, you'll always love them, don't mean you love them what they do. <laughs> Is that right? Is the father any different? I said, is the father any different? He loves us. He's clothed us in his righteousness because of the cross. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. It's by his grace. But the love of God on the inside can change the way you think. It can change the way you respond. Is this okay teaching and preaching? I, don't, I'm not, I hope I'm not putting anybody to sleep. I'm almost done. Let's, 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 let's go to the, one of these main scriptures. When you, say, when you say things, you want to say it in a way that they can receive it. You want to speak the truth. That doesn't mean you just let people walk all over you and do what they want, but you speak the truth and you, let, you say it in a way that, you know, I'm gonna, Lord, give me the wisdom to say it that they can receive it. Not just so I want to just, you know, be rough around the edges. Are you with me? You want to love folks. You want to say things right. How many know you want things said right to you, right? I know um, uh, anytime we, we, we get corrected, you want it said right. So you can say, not just put defenses up and say, uh, you know, no, that, that, that's not true. No, you have to, you say it in a way, honey. 
you know, you just said this and, and you, you responded that way. But honey, have you considered? Because <laughs> the first thing you say, no, I didn't say, well, I'm going to say it the way I want to say it. They just just stop. No? I'm glad, I, I'm glad the times I've been to the Lord and Jesus, Jesus never said it. He never responded that way to me. Right, Pastor? <laughs> he, can't read. he never said, where's the stop? And another thing, let me say this, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Let me say that uh, you don't have to be mad and angry all the time. You know? yeah. Don't take yourself too serious. Are you listening to me? You don't have to always, everything is uptight, you know, uptight. <laughs> Chill out, as my wife tells me sometimes. <laughs> I come in, oh, you know, but just trying to chill out. I remember I used to get real, I was one of these persons where when I, when I got a car, I wanted to keep it clean and neat. I remember we got a van when our kids were little. Remember back when minivans were the big thing? And we got a new van. I wanted to keep it clean. I, I had a truck, but the, the, for the family, we had a van. Our kids were, I don't know, five, six, seven, or whatever. And by the time we get ready to go on a trip, I, I, I don't have the van. My wife did with the kids. But then the time I get in the van, it's some bottles and water, and it was just toys everywhere, crumbs. You remember that, honey? I would go, I go, why is the van like this? You know, you know, I'm trying to keep it clean. I go get the vacuum cleaner out, and I was just, I was really anal about keeping things clean. The van, you know, and then just, I go down to make sure they're not eating in the car, you know. This is a true story. Somebody said, Pastor, I didn't know you was like that when you was in your twenties. I was, and I would be anal, cleaning up, you know, don't make them eat in the car, you know. And then one day. I found out the Lord, I was praying one time, and the Lord kind of spoke to my spirit. He said, you're beating a dead horse. <laughs> Somebody said, yeah. <laughs> he said, you are beating a dead horse. You need to let that go. And I said, oh, yeah, I guess I will. I'm just going to, whoo, had to, you know, when, when things got messy, I just, okay, okay. You know, I get, you know, by the time I'm, I'm driving it, because I normally drive my truck, but when we get on the phone, I look in the car, and I just smile, okay, where everybody want to go? <laughs> and then it, it got confirmed, because my wife told me, and then one day I was putting one of my child in the seat, they said, Dad, you just need to chill out. And I said, yeah, I guess I need to chill out. Daddy's going daddy's gonna, to daddy's gonna change. <laughs> Are you hearing me? And so I began to loosen up. Are you with me? Aren't you glad the Lord's not like that? <laughs> okay, I got one more scripture. Everybody ready for one more? I'm not going to uh, get to everything, but I told you I was going to get everybody out on time. Notice this. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is a love chapter. This is the nature that's in every one of us as believers. It's the nature. It says this in the New Living Translation. Love is what? I, have a, I used to have a tendency to be patient in certain things, and in certain things I wasn't patient. And I remember I thought of myself, well, I'm a very patient person. And then I had my kids. Just recently, I remember Candace said, I said isn't daddy patient? She goes, no, you're not. <laughs> On some things. But love is what? Patient. That's something that I, I, I have. It's funny. You can have more patience for other people than your family. Right. Yeah. Anybody know what I mean by that? You can have patience more for other people than your family. And then when it came out, I was like, hurry, let's go, hurry, you know. But love is what? Patience. I got to work on that. I have to work on it. Love is patience. What? Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. It doesn't boast. It doesn't try to esteem itself. You know, I want everybody to see me. It doesn't, it doesn't boast. It's not proud. How many know pride is the enemy? 
And this is your nature that's in you. Get this one. Or rude. Is there ever, is there ever time to be rude? No. Now, I remember in the retail world, I saw that all the time. <laughs> rude. It's how you say things, okay? Everybody doing all right? Love does not demand its own way. That's a big one. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable. Irritable. Sometimes our flesh can get irritable. I remember one time I went over, past, we were, I was, it was something, I was getting a little agitated and a little irritable. You say, Pastor Mark, you get irritable? I go, well, I have to walk. I know everybody thinks I'm sweet, and I am, but. <laughs> and I am. No. <laughs> but sometimes something can irritate you. And I remember we were going over Pastor Fred and Cindy's on a, on a, on a Saturday. We were spending the night. And, uh, you, you know, Pastor Cindy made a nice man. I remember we walked in. And of course, lovely Pastor Fred. Hey, Pastor Mark, glad to have you. And, and I, said, I said, how you doing? I go, well, I, in the, I'll be fine in a minute. I got to get my attitude right. <laughs> and Pastor Cindy came out the kill. Oh, Pastor Mark, I love you. You're so <laughs> I go, I have to get my attitude right. And I did. Didn't take long. I just, I, I made an adjustment by choice. And I got my attitude right. We were up fine. Love is not irritable. Notice this. It keeps no records when it's been wronged. Well, you know what? You this, you know, remember when you did that? Remember when you did this? It keeps no records. It's like it never happened. Are you with me? Let's move on. It's not glad about injustice, but rejoice whenever the truth wins out. How many know you want truth to win out? You want to love folks that did you wrong and forgive them. Just forgive them. Just forgive them. Let them go. You say, well, how can yeah, you can? Just say, no, Lord, I choose to let it go and let it go. And, 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 and Lord, because I'm walking in love, you're going to vindicate me, and he will. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, endures through every circumstance. Love will last forever. Love never fails. Everybody say, love never fails. How many know God said, or Paul said, to put on love? He said this in Colossians, last scripture, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender mercy. Tender mercy is not, well, I'm going to have my own way. I've got to say it the way I'm going to. If they can't take it, that's just the way it is. You've got to be gentle. Are you with me? You must clothe yourself with tender mercy, kindness. It's okay to be kind. That's one thing I, I love coming at Grace Life is everybody's kind. Everybody's gentle. And that's how heaven, that's how church ought to be across the country, across the world. It should be heaven on earth when you walk in. Heaven on earth. Amen. I told you this is the last scripture. Clothe yourself with humility. Humility. Preferring one another. Gentleness and patience. Being gentle. Being gentle. Get this, make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. How many have ever been offended? I can sit here and tell you today, and you should be able to say the same. I have no ill will or any animosity towards any person on this planet. Are you with me? I release people. If, if there's an offense, I just let it go. Matter of fact, it, it really, it, it's hard to offend me. It's like water off a duck's back. It really is. Because I don't really take myself all that serious. And, and to be honest with you, I, your security is in God. Yeah. Are you with, not in people? Not in what people think. It's in the Lord, in His righteousness. That's who you are. It says, make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together. How many know that here at Grace Life, we're all bounded together in love? 
I said, we're all bounded together in love. And I tell you what, love will make your home a better place. The love of God, the goodness of God, it, it will enrich your relationships with one another uh, and, your, and, and, and everything else. I'm going to just read a quote. It says this, the Lord, the love of God is no more sentimental feeling. It is a redemptive power. Charles Clayton Morrison once said, if you can rely, if you can really make a man believe you love him or her, you have won him. That was Dwight Moody. Did you get anything this, night, this morning? The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Let's bow your heads, please. Father, we love you. We thank you. Lord, I just gave a, a, just a little exhortation in Scripture on walking in love whether anybody else does or not. And Father, we thank you because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And so today, Lord, we believe that greater is he in, that is in us, the righteousness of God in Christ. And we'll grow in that love as we decide to walk in love, whether anybody else does or not. If there's anybody here that would say, hey, you know what, uh, Pastor Mark, I'm not sure if I were to die today. Uh, I, or I don't know this, the love of Jesus like I ought to. I don't know this Jesus. The Bible says that God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And you say, you know what, Pastor Mark, I, I want to be sure of my salvation. The Bible says that uh, Jesus died personally for you. If you say, Pastor Mark, I want you to pray for me today for that. Just raise your hand just real quickly. If there'll be anybody with the sound of my voice, say, Pastor Mark, I need prayer today. Any, any, any. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I want everybody to say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the love of God that has been shed abroad in my heart. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, and he is the Savior, and he is my Lord. And because of your love, Lord, I'll walk in the love of God. I'll develop in the love of God. I'll grow in the love of God. Because love is who you are. And love is maturity in you. And I thank you for it. And I bless you for it. In Jesus' name. Everybody doing okay? Everybody get anything today? Good, 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 good. Where we're going to walk in love. Lovers, lovers are the only ones that count. We're going to walk in the love of the Father. And we're going to continue our walk in the love of the Father uh, this week and in the days ahead. And, and the Lord will show you things, uh, you know, how you do that uh, to, to keep growing in him. And so I always have to go back to that. Okay. Glad to, everybody came out today. Why don't you raise both hands? I'm going to bless you. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray a blessing of protection, a blessing of peace and prosperity this week. May they walk in your provision this week and walk in peace with divine safety and protection. And Lord, we thank you that the life of God will flow out of everyone here and the love of God will saturate out of every person here. And that this week will be a week of fruitfulness. It'll be a week of growth. And it'll be a week of prosperity and peace. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming out today. And I want to say you are dismissed. <laughs>